Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at Source Monitor for Beginners. All right, if you're a professional editor or if you've been editing for a while, you know the Source Monitor and how valuable it is. But I seem to hear that uh, for a lot of users, they really don't understand what it's for. They're typically dragging stuff from the project bin or the desktop right into the timeline and looking at it on the program monitors. Like, why do I need to? Let's have a look at how useful the source monitor is. So the default workspace for Premiere Pro actually has the source monitor tucked behind the program monitor. We're going to go to our workspace and choose editing. If you've changed editing, double click on um, the name if you've got it exposed. And here I, sh I show the label so I can double click on it or reset that to the saved layout. And it takes us back to the factory settings that Adobe has. This is typically the way Adobe Premiere Pro has, has worked ever since, well, the Premiere days. I'm going to open up uh, this sequence here, and we'll come back to this sequence in a second. This is the balloon sequence. We've got our, our couple, and they're all um, enjoying, out, enjoying a day with the uh, hot air balloons. If I double click on a clip over here, it will load into the source monitor. It has its own independent playhead that's independent of the program monitor. And it's got a lot of uses. First of all, you can preview the clips. You can play them back. You can set in and out points using the I and O key. You can jump to the in and out point. So if I wanted to set an in point here, I'll tap the I key, out point there, and you can jump to those in and out points. Same thing that you can do in the uh, program monitor. Um, you can move one frame at a time. All of the same keyboard short shortcuts, L, K, J, backwards, L, L twice, three times, and it goes fast. So all of those things work the same. Um, you can see your time code. You can zoom in on things if, if you wanted to. So if you wanted to look at a specific uh, thing now, we can zoom right in, maybe this little balloon over here. You also have the option, if you open a clip that has both audio and video, then you'll see both of these buttons show up. So if I'm just opening up a video or audio clip, only one of those will be uh, bright. At the top, you'll actually see a list of all of the clips that you have opened. So if I go back to this one here, I can see that. And you can also clear this list. So you can close all of them, close all or just close that one. But I wanna show you if I click here and I can see the audio waveform and you can play just the audio if you want. You can also drag the audio. And by the way, what I'm doing here is being able to drag right in the middle of the clip instead of having to go down here. And when I was training uh, Ethan Cohen of the Cohen Brothers, this was one of his favorite features because he did a lot of uh, picking of shots uh, before uh, it went into the timeline with his brother. So he just happened to love this one. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm gonna open up a blank timeline and show you the main use. So I'm gonna double click on this folder that I have in my project bin, and I'm gonna find the market clips. There we go. So here's one of the major uses for a source monitor. And that's very precise uh, in and out points and dropping in the timeline. And a lot of editors uh, only work this way to have this unbelievable precision. Like I said, you can move one frame at a time. So I can either move this here 
or hit the play and find an in and out point that I want. So maybe right there, I'll hit I and I'll hit O and you've got two buttons down here at the bottom, insert and overwrite. Insert, if you look at it closely, there's a little arrow on the next one. That means that you'll insert, you'll uh, insert it and then you'll push everything else down like a ripple edit. And the other one just drops in over top. And that's the, they're right beside each other on, on a North American keyboard. So you can hit the I and O and then hit period and it jumps in. But we're gonna add a few more clips in here. Notice the play hit is also at the end, which makes it easier for me to add the next clip. So maybe when she's just emerging from the darkness here, I hit an I, O, period, and it drops it in. And now they're together just before she's touching his hair, period. And you can see each one is dropping in like that. Maybe right there, little smile. over on these rugs. This is not as interesting a shot. But I think you get the idea. Now you can also, let me just hit another in and out point. You can still drag and drop with an in and out point if you want. So I could drag this down here. And if we go back to our other clip, I could drag just the audio or the video from this file. Remember, this was a clip that had both audio and video. So if I grab the little uh, waveform, I can drag that audio in here. Oh, and you notice I can't drag it in here because source patching isn't on. <laughs> this is a number one thing that drives people nuts on, on Premiere Pro is Sometimes the source patching um, gets turned off. So although I had a clip with both audio and video, the audio source patching was turned off. So dragging did not change that. I wish Premiere Pro was smart enough that if I'm dragging audio and the source patching wasn't on, uh, duh, turn it on for me. Anyway, maybe in the future. So you have to have source patching on for audio to drag audio in. Same with video, if I didn't have video on and I tried to drag video in, I can't. So that's what this area is in here, source patching. And over here on the right, if you right click, you can set targets, follow, inserts, and overwrites. This just makes it easier uh, so that you don't have to set both track targeting and source patching. It does that automatically for you. Okay, so that's really the benefit. I mean, you can open images, you can open graphics, uh, in the uh, source monitor to see them. It's it's just a great way to work. Now, here's one last thing I wanna show you that the source monitor can do that I really think is amazing. We'll go back to our market. Remember, I had the market one over here. I'm gonna close it. I don't have to, but I wanna show you that I can drag the market into the source monitor and now I'm actually playing not a clip, I'm playing the whole timeline. And if I hit my up and down arrows, I'm gonna actually jump between those clips. I'm gonna grab a completely new sequence, call this string out. And I'm going to, let's grab all of these clips here. So we've, we've got the full clips in here. And let me grab another sequence. And this one is blank. I'll drag my string out into here. Remember, this is a bunch of clips from a sequence, I, O, period. Now, the one thing I have to do is this is nested, so I, I do have to turn this off. 
because I don't want this to come in as a nest. I want this to come in as a clip. Oh, but not there. Back at home, boom. All right, so remember this is my timeline of clips. And these are the full clips in and out. I just double clicked on this scroll we scroll bar to zoom all the way out. But I think you get the idea. I can hit my down arrow, go to the next clip. I O period, down arrow, I'm on the next clip. I O period, down arrow, I O period. And now I'm putting in all of these from the string out. And I'm doing it by looking at the source monitor. Maybe it's a little bit more advanced than, than you know, but he, I mean, let me, I, all I'm really doing is going up and down arrows and I'm doing it in the source monitor. Boom, boom, boom. And just using that as a new place to grab the clips I want and drop them in. So if you get used to this, you can really start grabbing a bunch of clips really easy, jump to the next one, in and out point. And because even though you've got an in and out point, you can still change the tail, the head. So the whole clip is there. You're not cutting, you're not throwing away anything. You're just trimming the clips as you're dropping them into the timeline. And I could drag this new one into the source monitor. It's also great to, to compare two edits side by side because you can look at them visually. Remember, we are using the editing workspace, which makes this easier. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of why you think the, the source monitoring might be useful to you. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? Like our many wonderful, amazing donors, you can do that on videorevealed.com slash shop. Donate once, monthly, any amount. There's lots of free stuff. There's a member section and we appreciate all the support we get from folks. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to uh, have a look at interesting ways that uh, maybe more advanced users are using Premiere Pro and then show the newer users uh, that they can use it too.